Before I introduce uh, uh, Steve Hauser, who is the Vice President for Grid Integration for NREL, he will cover the technology and I also hope he will talk a little bit about uh, where some of Colorado's uh, uh, projects for spot grid are compared to some of the other projects he is seeing uh, around the U.S. and uh, the rest of the world and what are the areas that we can specially provide joint initiatives in. And uh, the other thing I'd like to do is for the Q&A session, uh, if I may request uh, Mark and Dr. Bhagavad Bhattai to uh, sit back at the, uh, the chairs, I'd like to invite TJ and Ashok to join the podium so that uh, as Mark, uh, sorry, Steve Houser starts talking about the session, uh, we can be immediately ready for the Q&A. Thank you. With this, Steve Houser. Thank you very much. I <clears throat> apologize, my voice is a little bit rough today, and I'll uh, speak as clearly as I can late on a Monday afternoon. Uh, I want to thank uh, Prabir and the others that organized this session. I thought we had an absolute tremendous lineup of speakers, starting with Bradley earlier this afternoon from Oracle and, and down through our guests and, and into this panel. In some ways, it's hard to be the last speaker with, with such a great lineup of speakers. Um, I could almost say I agree with what everybody else has said before me, and that, that's all I need to say. I apologize. Um, I'm going to bore you with a few slides um, and try not to put you to sleep. But I will skip through them a little bit like uh, Matt did, too, in the interest of time, so that we have plenty of time to do discussions. Um, th this, is a, this is a tremendously exciting time in the power industry, and I'm hoping that a few of the things that I'll say will kind of reinforce the things that you've already heard today in terms of the changes that are happening. If, if you just step back a couple of years ago, or maybe three years ago, I'm not sure any of us would have predicted how much would be going on in India, how much would be going on here in Colorado, uh, or around the world. Um, it seems like wherever you go now in the world, there's talk about not just a smart grid or a smarter grid or, or a smart enough grid, but just talk about the next generation of grid. And I think as we enter into this decade, <clears throat> we're kind of into the second year of this decade now, um, this decade's going to be one of, of tremendous change. We're going to see a lot more changes than I think we even can anticipate at this point. And to a large extent, the first decade, uh, 2000 through 2010, where I slaved uh, a lot of hours in Washington trying to convince people that this was something they should pay attention to, I think that first decade was really one of preparation, one of starting to understand, get basic <coughs> Uh, sort of fundamental understanding of the things that we're now starting to see uh, take shape um, across the industry. Um, I won't, won't belabor this. Um, you kind of already know this, that today's electric systems, uh, largely production uh, follows demand. It's largely electromechanical, not digital, high carbon, low storage. Uh, largely blind to distribution, although that's changing uh, fairly fast. Very little information and control, <clears throat> and the assets are aging. Uh, most of these points have already been made today. If we look forward to the next to, to the next few decades and trying to prepare for 2030, 2040, 2050, where most of the assets we have in place now have to be uh, replaced or substantially upgraded. Um, we're going to be looking at a system that's, that's, that has much more information, as, as uh, Randy said earlier, I think he said that megabyte to, to terabyte, right? I'm, I'm hearing more and more petabyte, right? So we're going from megabyte world to petabyte world. Um, I can't remember the exact number, some of you probably already know this, but I, I think it's Google now that says that they collect something like a petabyte of data every 20 minutes uh, or something like that, and they have to not only collect that, but then manage it and archive it and all those sorts of things. I think the utility industry is headed into that same space. <clears throat> the design going forward will be much more distributed, less centralized. Clean techs are you know, certainly a priority. We've talked about that today. 
storage, I think, will become ubiquitous. Uh, we could argue about that for the next couple of hours, which we don't have time to do. But I'm, I'm going to talk, come back to that point a bit <clears throat> before I finish. Um, operations will become automated. Energy services will become much more differentiated than they are today. Uh, consumers will be uh, participants in managing the system, and buildings will become much smarter um, going forward. <clears throat> Um, in deference to one of our utilities that's here today, I won't tell you who, where, where this happened uh, this last year, but it's, it's not only creating a smarter system to create a more efficient system, but it's certainly creating a system that can anticipate failures and prevent failures, increase reliability, increase reliability where there's um, very sensitive loads. Um, I, I'll, I'll mention one thing real briefly and then probably not have time to come back to it, but the Department of Defense here in the U.S. is paying a lot of attention to this now because, of course, they have critical loads that go way beyond the kind of critical loads that we're, we're showing here in these, in these photos. And they're looking at redesigning their own power infrastructure to accommodate the kind of loads that they have both now and, and going forward. Uh, this is a typical load duration curve. It's not from Colorado, it's actually from PJM, but um, not surprisingly, one of, the one of the big opportunities, if this works here, is to target those few hours a year that, that are absolutely driving the, the capacity build of the system. So we build uh, transmission, distribution, and generation capacity so we can hit those peaks whenever they occur. We try our best to predict over the next 10 years, maybe even 20, uh, how those peaks are going to change and how to build the infrastructure to accommodate those. We need smarter ways to manage that, those. And that's certainly one of the opportunities. Um, when you start talking about customer, you know, one, one of the things we're learning as we get smarter and smarter ourselves about how the grid operates is that there's no such thing as the typical customer, right? We're all different. You can go into my neighborhood and you can look at the houses down my street and you, and you might say, well, these houses are all about the same, right? They're all about the same square footage, they're all about the same vintage, so the insulation's probably the same. And you can make a generalization that they all use electricity uh, in a very similar way and, and you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be further from the truth because every single um, house operates very, very differently because we have different needs, partly because the, 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 uh, the appliance side, the load side, is growing um, faster than almost anything right now as we add televisions and computers and, and uh, game boxes and the case of my house.